So before I start the video, let's talk about the government shutdown. As I mentioned previously, it's a propaganda tool to scare people into thinking that they can't live unless there's a government, thus coercing them into supporting more spending, higher taxation, and greater suppression of their liberty. You might know these people in your own lives, but what you can do about it is to go to your nearby national park, places that are supposed to be closed during the shutdown. Take pictures of yourself there and share them around. A picture is worth a thousand words, and what yours can say is that the state can't shut down nature. The only reason you're not allowed to go there is because some assholes a thousand miles away use money that they stole from you to tell you that you can't. The government doesn't have a monopoly on land, so as far as you should be concerned, they can take whatever right they claim they have to stop you and shove it. Send your national park pictures to me on Discord or Twitter, preferably Discord, and I'll include it in a future video. Now, onto the real video. Oh hi, I'm the heretic. An article is making its way around the internet, a piece from the New York Times titled The $15 Minimum Wages Here, Why We Need $33 an Hour. The case they try to make is that although the minimum wage increase in New York City is a good thing, for many people, this simply won't be enough to cover the astronomical cost of living expenses in this city. Thus, more than doubling the minimum wage will allow single parents to live self-sufficiently, according to a cost calculator cited in the article. In this case, non-self-sufficiency being defined as difficulty simply being able to afford food. However, I respectfully disagree with what the article is proposing. You see, I, and I think most of you who have seen these calls for minimum wage increases pretty much our entire lives, see that no matter how high it gets, it's never enough. So let's stop pussyfooting around. Instead of these silly half measures, that's just going to postpone their outrage for another four years, tops, we need to get serious. I propose we raise the minimum wage to $1 million an hour, not just in New York City, but around the country. A minimum wage of $1 million an hour is a simple, common-sense increase that would be of a tremendous benefit to our economy, and if you disagree, then you disagree with common sense. And you don't disagree with common sense, do you? First of all, the current level of the minimum wage is very low by any reasonable standard. For about four decades, increases in the minimum wage have consistently fallen behind inflation, so that in real terms the minimum wage is substantially lower than it was in the 1960s. Meanwhile, worker productivity has doubled. Isn't it time for a raise? Low wages not only pose a danger to workers and our economy, they also result in the expenditure of taxpayer dollars to support programs that too many low-paid workers need to get by. With more family income, some people would choose to retire, go back to school, or have children, making it easier for others who need jobs to find them. Working families would have more time for community life, including politics. Americans would start to reclaim the middle-class political organization they once had. Because payroll and income tax revenues would rise, the federal deficit would come down. Social security worries would fade. Workers need not ever worry about safety nets with an income of $1 million an hour. After all, saving for emergencies and for retirement would be far easier than at any time in history. Spending power has to be in the hands of those who actually spend in the real economy. Raising the minimum wage to $1 million directly puts more money in the pockets of low-income workers who cannot meet their basic everyday needs. With more take-home pay, these workers will spend that money immediately and locally on goods and services they were previously unable to afford. Essentially, their increased income is liquid, meaning that it is revolving through the economy. Consumer spending drives 70% of the economy, and increasing demand is key for jumpstarting and maintaining production and hiring. A raise in the minimum wage puts money into the pockets of low-income consumers who immediately spend it at local businesses. 
Just try to imagine what will happen to the economy when every consumer's disposable income increases a thousandfold. How many would patronize coffee shops, retailers? How many homes out of reach of working class families will suddenly become affordable? Because they spend their money, these businesses will, in turn, be able to expand, hire more workers, and thus creating more consumers and taxpayers. Raising the wage enables workers in low income jobs to escape poverty, will reduce the number of individuals' reliance upon safety net programs, and lower the demand. For various health services, helping to mitigate rising health care costs. Much of the conversation on increasing the wage focuses on the economic impact, but it is important to note the other positive effects that such a change would have. Academic research on the effects of the minimum wage shows that increases help lead to reductions in recidivism, reductions in domestic violence and child abuse, and reductions in teen pregnancy rates. All of which, in addition to the positive effects of reducing poverty, have substantial benefits of improved public health and savings of taxpayer dollars. On the flip side, scores of economic and health studies have shown a clear link between low incomes and serious health problems, including diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, and infant mortality. This is because low income people aren't able to afford healthier food choices. Due to the federal government destroying millions of tons of produce every year to artificially inflate prices while subsidizing and thus making cheaper high fructose corn syrup. I mean, what? Excuse me. Raising the minimum wage would ensure healthier foods become more affordable. So there are a multitude of ways raising the minimum wage to a million dollars an hour will help people. Does raising the minimum wage cause job loss? The bulk of rigorous research examining hundreds of case studies of minimum wage increases at the state and local levels finds that raising the minimum wage boosts incomes for low paid workers without reducing overall employment or job growth to any significant degree. Will employers go out of business if they must pay a higher minimum wage? No! While opponents frequently make this claim, research and experience demonstrate otherwise. In fact, Many of the loudest minimum wage opponents are the country's largest and most profitable companies. So there you have it the case for how a $1 million minimum wage will benefit us. After all, any of the arguments put forward for a $9, $12, or $15 minimum wage must also apply to a million dollars. If their arguments are to be consistent, if consumer spending increases with a $15 minimum wage, Then consumer spending will also increase with a million. If healthcare costs go down from 12, then it must also decrease from a billion. If a minimum wage of $9 an hour would reduce infant mortality and not at all cause job losses, then so must a minimum wage of $500 quintillion a second. All of these have to be true. Otherwise, Minimum wages opponents are putting arbitrary limits on the spending power of working people, the reasoning for which must come from either ignorance or sadism. Oh, wait. At a certain point, there are costs, aren't there? We can't have a minimum wage of one million, many progressives will admit. But why? According to their own logic and reasoning, there's no reason aside from malice that they can't use the violence of the state. To elevate everyone's standard of living. If it's within the power of almighty government, why should the millionaire lifestyle be exclusive to millionaires? Why can't the minimum wage become one million? Is it because no business will be able to afford workers that expensive, resulting in mass unemployment? But I thought you said the increased business and consumer spending would allow businesses to afford higher labor costs. Is it because businesses that do try to pay these costs will have to pass the costs on to consumers, offsetting the gains in spending power? Maybe I'm off target. You can correct me in the comments, but whatever your reasoning for why a $1 million an hour minimum wage won't work, it must also apply to $999,999 an hour, and at $999,998, and so on and so forth. If it's true, Then a $999,997 an hour minimum wage would not work 
then those exact reasons must also apply at a $33 minimum wage. 15, 9, 1. This is the economic reality of minimum wage. It either works all the time at all wage levels or it doesn't. Either way, if you believe the minimum wage's benefits outweigh the costs, then you're a sadist for arbitrarily restricting the purchasing power of workers or you're a monster for knowingly restricting the employment opportunities of people who would benefit from low-paying jobs. And if you've watched this video up to this point, you no longer have the excuse of ignorance. So pick one! Questions? Comments? Critique? Do I go far enough with my minimum wage? Which are you? A sadist or a monster? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.